Hi, and thanks for joining. If you're new here, I'm Wendy and this is Nina's Jewels. My husband and I buy things at garage sales, flea markets, thrift stores, just about anywhere we can find things to sell online and flip for a profit. If that's content you're interested in, you're in the right place. Today's video is going to be what sold for April 23rd through 29th. Let's get started. The first thing we sold was a pair of Levi's 569 men's jean shorts. We put in the keywords that they were dad jorts. <laughs> so actually this week I really want to talk about the importance of keywords. And in this particular listing, I do think these keywords really helped this item to sell for the maximum amount of money. We used the keyword dad and the keyword jorts, which I think helped this item sell, and it sold for a full asking price of $29.99. We had gotten this pair of jean shorts or jorts at the Goodwill bins. We paid $1.18 for them, and we got positive feedback on them. Next up was an item that sold way faster than I thought it would. We almost certainly underpriced this item. I researched it, but could not find another one just like it. So either there was just that unicorn that was out there looking for it, and they just happened to have a search set up to notify them when our listing was set to go live, or this is an item that sells every time it's listed and it just doesn't come around that often. Either way, we definitely underpriced it and it would have sold for more because it sold within hours of us listing it. This was called Then Sings My Soul. It was a 40th anniversary cookbook from the Silver Serenaders Choir of Texas, and it was a 2020 cookbook. It was just a local cookbook for a Texas choir. I had no idea that this thing would sell so fast. I think I priced it, um, I don't know, you'll see on the tile over here at what I priced it at, but I ended up sending out a best offer almost immediately because I didn't think it would sell for $11.98 and they just snatched it up for that price. And But the good news is we only paid 25 cents for it, so we still made a nice profit on it and we were happy that it sold so fast and we got positive feedback on it. But if I ever see that cookbook again, I'm definitely picking it up and we'll see if it sells again super fast, then we'll know it's a bolo. If it sits around for a really long time, we'll know we just happened to find the one person who was out there searching for that cookbook the first time. The next item that sold was an item that I was really shocked that it took a long time to sell. When I found this item in the Goodwill bins, I was so excited. I was like, oh, I've really found something that's going to sell fast. <laughs> then it ended up sitting around in our store for um, over a year, and I was really shocked about this. This was a pair of Pearl Azumi women's padded they were called sugar thermal cycling tights. And Pearl Izumi is definitely normally a bolo. It usually sells really well. I don't know if what made ours take so long to sell is that it was an extra small or what the deal was, but these were new with tags. I was shocked that we found them in the bins that because these particular bins that we were looking in had been really picked over and nobody had picked these up. We got them for 67 cents in the bins that day and they ultimately sold for $45 even on best offer. Next up was something that we got at a garage sale. This was an Ozark Trail. It was a Texas flag, red, white, and blue inflatable cooler float. So it was an inflatable float that would fit your cooler. And so you could put your cooler in it and float around in the lake or the river or wherever, in your pool or wherever, and you could have easy access to your drinks. This was new in the package. It had never been used. We paid $5 for it at a garage sale and it sold for our full asking price of $33.99. Next up was a lot of two plush penguins. They were two different brands, the petting zoo that had a squeaker inside of it, and then a 10 inch Newport Aquarium penguin. They were not that valuable on their own and we got them at the same time so we just decided to lock them together as a lot of two plush penguins. We got these out of a Goodwill plush blue box that we purchased and our out-of-pocket cost on both of those was $2.19. They sold relatively quickly for plush 
For $22.99, that was our full asking price. If you want to see our unboxing of that Goodwill plush blue box, you can check that out. I'll link that video above and in the description box below. It is a relatively entertaining video. Next up was a Pokemon Match Battle 2022 McDonald's promo card. It was the Victini Holo card, hologram card. We got this in a garage sale, at a garage sale, and randomly there were a few Pokemon cards inside of a bag of Mardi Gras beads. So we picked up that bag of Mardi Gras beads and we had paid 25 cents for the whole bag of Mardi Gras beads. And those Pokemon cards were just kind of thrown in there as an extra, so. On our spreadsheet, I said that we didn't pay anything for this because we also listed the Mardi Gras beads because some of them were the Mardi Gras beads that have the big beer um, pendants and some of those will sell for, for quite a lot of money. So we did list those, even though we were picking this up for the Pokemon cards. Uh, this card sold for $2.29. And like I said, we said that we had no cost on it. It sold for our asking price. Next up was a lot of two purple glitter glass decorative decor teardrop flower vases. And I said, I used the keyword teardrop in this because they had the, that teardrop shape to them. And these were um, found in a storage auction unit that we had purchased. We had gotten this whole unit for $75 and our per listing cost on this unit was just 28 cents. These vases sold for $22.75 on best offer. Next up was another item that we got out of a different storage unit. This was a shirt. The brand was called Dees One, which I always laugh when I say it. I think it's a funny name. This was a black and blue urban streetwear all over graffiti print shirt. And we had paid just 24 cents for this shirt and it sold for our full asking price of $27.99. It did take a little while to sell. But um, I think the keywords on this that were important to use would be streetwear and all over print. Those are keywords that helped that one sell. Next up was an item. This is a brand that's a bolo. This one's called Arthur Court Designs. They make a lot of table serving wear, pewter items. This one was a 1997 four piece set of place card holders and they were in the shape of grapes. And this was, a, they, they were used, but we had the original box and everything. So that made it more valuable. We had gotten this at a garage sale. We paid $3 for it and it sold for $29.60 on best offer. Next up was an item that we got out of the bins. This was an adult men's one size gray embroidered Fort Worth Cats, which is, I don't think that they're around anymore, but this was a minor league baseball team that used to be in Fort Worth. Um, this is, and the hat was a boonie style bucket hat. We got this out of the Goodwill bins for $1.18 and it sold for $18.68. Next up was a 2016 Sonic Restaurant Wacky Pack Kids Meal Toy Dragon's Race to the Edge Viking Helmet. It was new in the package. We got this out of the Goodwill bins. We paid just 94 cents for it and it sold for $10.38 on offer to buyer. Sonic toys tend to sell the best out of all the Kids Meals toys that we pick up. I don't know, Sonic toys, I guess people pick up less of them or get less of them and so they are harder to come by. We've just found that they sell better. Next up was a 1999 Seagate Software Crystal Reports Developer Edition. It was the version 8 upgrade. It was complete in the box. We got this at a thrift store. We paid $1.62 for it and it sold for our asking price of $39.99 and that sold pretty quickly. I don't even know what that software did. <laughs> I just listed what was on the box in the title. Next up was a National Geographic magazine, volume 37. It was a bound book that included uh, January through June, 1920. It included six issues in this bound book. We got this from a family member who gifted it to us to sell, so we had no cost associated with it. And this book sold for $28.49, which was our full asking price, but we were running a sale on books in April. That was, I think, 5% off. And we got positive feedback on that. 
Next up was a collector's suite of three signed and numbered prints by the artist Larry Dyke and included a certificate of authentication and a portfolio cover. We got this from the other business that we own, which is a custom picture frame shop. So this was just old stock that that business no longer sells. This suite of prints sold for $50 even on best offer. Next up was a really cool wooden vintage Spalding Crobat tennis racket. And we had the storage frame or cage that you use to put around it to keep it from getting damaged. We got this at a garage sale. We paid $7 for it and it sold for its full asking price of $89.99. And that went to Canada, if I'm remembering right, through the International Shipping Program. Next up was a four inch blue Chelsea football club, or if you're an American, soccer. <laughs> that was a bath time vinyl rubber ducky. And when I was researching this, I could not find another one listed in the States at all that was a Chelsea football club, but I found lots of them listed overseas. But this one was hard to come by if you lived in the, in the States. So I put hard to find on that because it is hard to find if you are in the U.S. So I listed it high at $16.99 and that's what it sold for. It sold for our asking price and we had gotten that out of a thrift store toy bag for just 22 cents. So good profit on that one. Next up was a pair of Girls Athletic Works, Dry Works, large gray and pink lined running shorts. These were my daughters, so they were probably a hand-me-down. I don't remember what our cost was if we did purchase them. They sold for $10.99, which was our full asking price. We did have these in our store for a very long time. Next up was a brand new sealed cassette tape of Inya Paint the Sky with Stars, Best of Inya. We got that at a thrift store. We paid 13 cents for it and it sold on offer to buyer for $16.98. We got a lot of lowball offers on that, but I stuck to my guns on that and it did eventually sell for something, you know, close to our asking price that we were willing to accept. We got a lot of offers like below $10 that I wasn't willing to accept because that was new in the package. Next up was a Mexico folk art two and a half inch ivory concrete sleeping man siesta sombrero figurine or statue. So lots of keywords in that one. We got this out of a storage auction. We paid just 28 cents for it. And this one sold for $16.99. We did have a pair of these also that sold earlier. And after those sold very, very quickly, when I listed this one, I did list it for a little bit higher. And this one did sell for higher than the other two. So learned my lesson um, on those other two selling very, very quickly. And I did price the, this one a little bit higher. Next up was a New Testament King James Version Green Pocket Bible. This one we got at a thrift store. We paid just 35 cents for it and it sold for $9.49, which was our full asking price minus our promotion. These little pocket Bibles, if you see them, some of them can sell pretty well. Not for tons of money, but they just sell quickly. And we like to sell things that sell quickly. We're willing to make a few bucks on things that sell quickly. So, and this is an easy list too. Next up was another one of these. This was another New Testament five inch pocket Bible. This one was from 2016. We paid 35 cents for this one also, and it sold for $9.49 also. So as you can see, they're ju they just move. So we continue to pick them up. Next up, here's another good keyword to use, the word Y2K. This was a Y2K Nordstrom house brand called S&D, women's white vinyl mod style raincoat. So mod is another good keyword to use because that's the style that it is. And then it had black embroidery on it. It was a really cute raincoat. We got this at the Hoarder estate sale where there was just thousands and thousands of pieces of clothes in this house. We paid $8 for this raincoat and it sold for $79.98 on offer to buyer. We got positive feedback on that. Next up was a brand new and packaged Pampered Chef silicone Easter spring cookie mold. We got this in the Goodwill bins. We paid 67 cents for it and it sold for our full asking price of $18.99. This one did take a little while to sell. I was surprised it took so long to sell, but we did eventually sell it for our full asking price. So that's good. So at this point, I'd like to stop for a moment and ask you guys if you're enjoying this video to please make sure to hit that like button. 
And if you're not already subscribed or if you're new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps out our channel and we really appreciate it. It shows YouTube that you are a supporter of this video and lets them know to spread this video out to more people and helps us continue to provide great content to you guys. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Let's move on. The next item was a vintage piece of red bandana gingham fabric. It was marked Faye Liverman for Marcus Brothers. And we got this at an estate sale. We paid $3.25 for it. It was there on a Sunday on half price day. And this one sold pretty quickly for $29.68. Next up was a lot of five Cosmopolitan magazines. It was multiple issues from 2022. We got these for free from someone on the Nextdoor app. And this lot sold for $22.79. And I think that was our asking price minus the promotion. Next up was a really cool vintage 1960s dress. It was aqua and silver metallic brocade, and it was a sleeveless maxi dress. And I was just about to change this listing from the word maxi to prom because we're in prom season, and I thought that would help this item sell. And then this dress sold, so I didn't end up having to change that keyword. But we had gotten this at a garage sale where we got a lot of vintage clothes and this one sold for $59.98. So if you haven't checked out that video where we got all of those really cool vintage clothing items, I will link that video in the description box below. So definitely go check that out. We got positive feedback on that purchase as well. Next up was a lot of five packages of Hallmark party invitations. They said, when friends gather, they were all new in the package. We had gotten these in the Goodwill bins. We paid a total of $4.60 for them. That's how we worked out our cost that day. For these items, we had originally had them listed individually, so that's probably a little high on the cost, but that's just what we have on our spreadsheet. But these sold for $42.99. That was our full asking price, and it does seem like they're selling better as a lot. Next up was a brand called From Marty Mitchell, and this was a 54-inch Giant Dahlia Queen size quilt template set. And we got this at an estate sale. It was used, but the seller had it marked what it was, so we knew what it was. We had paid $5 for that, and it sold very quickly for $26.38. We got positive feedback on that. Next up was a pair of one inch yellow and gold tone enamel rhinestone hibiscus flower clip on earrings. These were really pretty vintage earrings that we got at an estate sale for $5. They sold for our full asking price of $19.99 and they sold to a subscriber named Judy. Judy has a YouTube channel. It's called Thrifton KC Style. So definitely go check out Judy's channel. She has a lot of good reseller content. So I will link her channel above and in the description box below and go sub her up and see what all she has to offer. Next up is a 2012 Viacom Playmates Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Master Splinter action figure. I'd gotten this at a thrift store out of a toy bag that was like full of action figures. And this is one of the things I picked up that bag for because I saw this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figure in there. And if I usually see a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figure, I'll pick it up. Even if it's modern, it'll sell. We had paid 71 cents for this, and this one sold for $14.99, which was our full asking price. Next up was a surprise to me that this sold for so much. This was a Wilson Official NCAA Encore Composite Level Basketball. It was a size 7. It did have the initials of the previous owner written on the ball. So you'll see that we included that right in the title. If we have room to include a flaw or a defect or some important information about the listing in the title, we always try to do that because you cannot count on a buyer to always go into the listing and read it. So we try to include as much information in the title as we possibly can. We had gotten this out of a storage auction. We paid just 28 cents for it. And so I was really shocked that we were able to list this for $49.99 and it sold for our full asking price. Next up was a lot of 10 Baby Einstein videos, VHS videos. I don't know if it was the complete collection, but it was a lot of the different videos. 
and we tested all of them and they worked. We got all of these at a thrift store. Our out of pocket cost on these was just $1.49 and they sold very quickly, like within a day or two for $47.68 on offer to buyer. Baby Einstein anything is a bolo. Anytime we've had a Baby Einstein figure, a Baby Einstein VHS, anything, those have just flown out of our store or we've gotten a high price for them. Another thing that is a bolo are the Baby Einstein puppets. Those sell for lots and lots of money too. So be on the lookout for Baby Einstein stuff. There are major collectors of that out there. Next up was a pair of the saltwater sandals. This was the white sweetheart style. I had gotten these when I had purchased a big lot of shoe liquidation sandals and shoes and things like that. Most of them were these saltwater sandals, but I also purchased some other brands. We had paid $9.09 .09 for these sandals and this pair sold for $42.99, which was our full asking price. Next up was an iron on military veteran Vietnam remembered patch. We got this at an estate sale in a Ziploc that was full of different patches. We paid just 27 cents for it, and it sold for $9.99, which was our full asking price. Next up was one of the Build-A-Bear workshop outfits. If you saw in a recent video where we went to a garage sale and it was called like we found a treasure chest or something like that, I will link it in the description box below, but we found just a in like a huge plastic tub full of Build-A-Bear clothes. And that thing was extremely full of value. This was the first thing that sold. This was a Build-A-Bear workshop five piece red flannel plaid sleepwear outfit. It included a robe, a set of pajamas and slippers. And we had gotten that at that garage sale for just a dollar. We had broken down our cost on almost everything from that bin at a dollar. Um, and this outfit sold for $27 on Best Offer. We got positive feedback on that. Next up was a Heath pre-algebra textbook from 1986. I had gotten this at an estate sale for $2. I comped it at the estate sale and found that it was worth picking up and it sold for $23.18 on Offer to Buyer. Next up was a vintage 1990s Hard Rock Cafe Tokyo extra large cropped t-shirt. It was a single stitch t-shirt. It did have some staining on it. So you'll see I included the word read in the title. And I also included the word single stitch in the title. That was an important keyword to include in the title to know that it was like a real vintage t-shirt that was single stitch. People like to know if it's single stitch. We got this at a garage sale for $5 and it sold for our full asking price of $24.99. It did take a little while to sell. Next up was a Build-A-Bear workshop, another one of these three piece felt Easter egg costume outfit that included the hat and the frog accessory. This sold for $21.58 on offer to buyer and we had paid just a dollar for that. And next up was another one of the Build-A-Bear outfits. This one was a four-piece glow-in-the-dark pajama set, and it included slippers. And we've actually sold these shorts before, and I just listed them as shorts. I had no idea they glowed in the dark. And I don't know what made me realize this, this glowed in the dark, except for I think maybe I saw the kind of glow-in-the-dark part of the fabric on the shirt and realized it. And then I probably undersold those shorts last time because I didn't realize. This sold for our full asking price of $24.99 and we had paid just a dollar. Next up was one of the items we got from that vintage clothing garage sale. This was probably my favorite clothing item that we got, or I don't know, I had so many. I liked this one a lot though. This was a 1970s PBJ brown floral boho. It was an acetate and nylon peasant dress. It was so cool looking. <laughs> We paid $5 for this and it sold for $30 on best offer. Next up was an item we found in the Goodwill bins that was new in the package. It was an Ertl Theodore tugboat diecast Carla cool cabin cruiser boat. And it was new in the package, like I mentioned. We got this for $1.18 and it sold for $11.98 on offer to buyer. Next up was a vinyl record. This one was Greatest Hits by the Bellamy Brothers. 
We tested it and it worked. We got this at an estate sale for $3.75 and it sold for our full asking price of $19.99. And last up was a vintage package of fishing lure bait. <laughs> this one was called Berkeley Power Bait Power Craw Blue Fishing Lures. They were new, unopened in the package, so I listed them as new old stock, new. We got these at an estate sale. They were inside of a fishing tackle box and we purchased the tackle box just because it had a bunch of unopened packages of fishing bait in it. We paid 36 cents for it and it sold for $19.99. And last but not least, I'll go over all of the collectible cards that sold for my husband's personal collection. This particular week, we did not sell any low value cards, meaning cards valued at $10 or under. But we did have a really good week for high value cards, meaning cards valued at $10 or over. This week we sold three high value cards. The first one was a Magic the Gathering Unlimited card. It was called Sinkhole. That one sold for $21.18 on best offer. We got positive feedback on that. Next up was another Magic the Gathering Unlimited card. That one was called Demonic Tutor. We've actually sold several of these in the past. This one sold for $111.38 on auction. We got positive feedback on that. And next up was another Magic the Gathering Unlimited card called Siobhan or Shiban Dragon. And that one sold for $297 on auction. And we got positive feedback on that. So let's go over all the totals. This week we sold a total of 44 items for an average sale price of $36.47. Our sales totaled $1,604.74 and our net profit was $1,039.49. Definitely those cards really helped us out this week. This was one of our best weeks of the year so far. And I wish all weeks were like this, but we don't always list high value cards like that. So unfortunately we don't always have weeks that are this good. So let us know in the comments below how you choose your keywords. When I'm making a listing, I usually go into drafts and start typing up a basic description of the listing. So we'll use the, the dad shorts, for example, the jean shorts, the first item from my listing. I would go in and type in the brand name, which was Levi's, and the style name, which was 569. I would always include that they're men's. Uh, I know some people don't actually include that because they feel like eBay is automatically populating that in the item, but I feel like people are looking for that. And when I'm searching for something, I feel like eBay sometimes shows you both things and I find it confusing if it doesn't say that in the title. So I always include that. I always put the size in the title and the color. If I'm doing jeans, I always try to put the type of wash it is. Like these were medium wash, so I would include that. In this one, I would want it to say jean shorts, obviously. These were in excellent used condition, so I would probably want to have EUC in the title. And at that point then, I would you know, see how many characters I have left and kind of see what I have to work with. So then at that point, I would probably go into eBay and type in, you know, Levi's 569 men's jean shorts and see how other sellers are marketing their item and their title, what keywords they're using. And maybe I find out that a lot of sellers are using the word jorts or dad shorts or something like that. And so I decide, okay, that's something that is helping items sell. So I use those keywords in my title. Or Maybe I am not finding a lot of information in eBay, or maybe I'm needing more keywords, find, you know, feeling like it's not, you know, saying enough descriptors about the item. So I go search on Google or go search on Mercari, go search elsewhere for keywords that might be available. Or sometimes, you know, I, if I'm not finding a lot of information, I'll go straight to the manufacturer's website and look at how they described the item, not necessarily in their title, but in their description of the item if it's a more modern item I will actually see you know how did they describe it in their item description just 
just pick on pick out words that they use to describe it. So that, that's just kind of how I do some research for keyword information. Let, let us know what you do to find keywords for your item because I know keywords are sometimes difficult for people to come up with. There are certain things that I struggle with with keywords like electronics, I always struggle. Tools is something I struggle with. Jewelry is something I struggle with because there's styles of jewelry that I don't necessarily know. But when you start searching for things on eBay, you can just pull from other sellers listings and kind of figure it out as you go. So it just kind of takes practice to learn keywords, but you'll get there. Let us know in the comments below how you get keywords because I'm always looking to learn and I know that you could probably help some of our viewers as well. All right, well, thanks again so much for watching. Please make sure to hit that like button. And again, if you're not already subscribed, the best thing you can do to help us out is hit that subscribe button with the notification bell turned on. Stick around for the next video that's gonna pop up over here and we will catch you guys on the flip side. Bye.